Hey everyone, the name's Eric Doran. Okay, I know body language, sketchy matter, INFJs. Uh, do you have a special body language that is unique to your personality type? That's what I'm trying to investigate. That's what I'm trying to be open-minded to. And I think that it's not about, because I think visual typing has often been done in the wrong way in the past. It's not about stereotypical expressions. It's not about reading mouth sizes. It's not about how often you bob with your head or how often you nod or shake your head. Or It's not about those stereotypical shallow gestures. It's about much deeper things, deeper visual signals that and it, in the end I think it's always about emotional reading like we can of course distinguish scientifically between uh, how a sad face looks to how a happy face looks or how a angry face looks compared to a yellow face or so on and so on it's uh, it takes practice it can be hard for a new person to do it but you can learn to read faces and read emotions similarly I think you can learn to read visual expressions and visual ways of expressing emotions and how you express yourself and you can listen to how a person talks and you can get a clue into how that person thinks. That's not, I think, a controversial statement that if you have a certain cognitive processing, you'll speak in a different way, you'll think in a different way, you'll express yourself in a different way because your interests are different. Uh, just take an intuitive, an intuitive will look at the world in a different way than a sensor and that should be visible in the eyes. Uh, feeling type will have a different way of communicating themselves to the world and that will have a difference in how their facial expressions look. Similarly with the body language, with gestures, I think that uh, we carry ourselves differently depending on how we think and where we are in our life and our mood and our subtype. But I think with um, visual typing and what gives it merit, because I don't think its merit comes from being able to type people accurately. I'm not sure it can type people accurately. I think that often it gets wrong. But I think it can give us a clue about the person's subtype or development and where they are. They appear to be uh, what they appear to be dealing with at the moment. Now, I would argue that INFJs have a few visual signals that are unique to them, to their personality type. Eight uh, in total visual preferences that are unique to them, and four that are more native to them as INFJs. Now, if you take an INFJ, I would argue that an INFJ is uh, very uh, mid-interface centric. INFJs have the most muscle activation in the middle points of their face. And uh, I find that INFJs are people that uh, will have four key gestures. The first is, the INFJ tends to look sly. The INFJ looks like they are scheming, like they have a plan, like they have a secret strategy. And uh, this secret strategy is secret even to themselves. They don't really know what they're doing, but they look like they know what they're doing. And this can often prompt people to ask INFJs, like, what are you thinking about? What is the plan? Where are you going? Even when INFJs don't know themselves what they are doing, but of course they are doing something. They just haven't thought it out verbally yet. Now, the reason we think this way is often because INFJs tend to, like, have this uh, way of activating muscles around their nose to look like they're looking at something, like they have a sense of uh, straightness to their eyes, that their eyes are looking at something in particular, that there's something that they want, uh, that they are headed towards. You can see that in how they walk, they, how they express themselves and what they're doing. That sense of composure of the eyes and of the, how they look at other people. I find that often other people can also describe this as a little intense, but it's particularly intense because the INFJ is an intuitive and introverted type. And because of this, INFJs often look like they have musing eyes, eyes that look like they are contemplating something, thinking about something, reflecting deeply on something, trying to figure something out. INFJs look like they are preoccupied with some theoretical problem or some philosophical or existential issue that they are dealing with or trying to figure out or puzzle out. So <laughs> often another common question for the INFJ is what are you thinking about? What's happening inside that head of yours? And that's not something just INFJs get to experience, but also INFPs and INTPs and INTJs get this question. Uh, we all have this musing quality to our eyes. We look, our eyes look like they are musing. With feeling and judging, and as a feeling judging type, INFJs also tend to come off as friendly, since when we talk to other people, when we are engaging and communicating with other people, we look like we have a, are weaving a personal message carefully crafted for the other person, that we are trying to talk to you in particular as a listener, as the audience, that we are caring about the audience, that we are friendly to the audience, that we are 
uh, open to them. I think that's uh, something that uh, makes people relax more and I think it's something that makes people listen more, like in a sense that it makes people feel like the story is about them, that I'm talking about you right now, not about uh, anyone else but, but you. S finally, something uh, people, a lot of people I've noticed, I think, is that INFJs have a sensitive gaze and an intense gaze and that comes from also being a feeling introvert. Uh, feeling introvert uh, in a sense that of being a feeling type and being an introverted type. Not having the introverted feeling function, okay, I know that's confusing. But we share this signal with INFPs, ISFJs and ISFPs. And um, it's a quality of uh, having a sense of intensity, like you're preoccupied with some personal problem or issue. Like you're deeply uh, invested in what you're saying. That what you're doing or saying right now is very, very, very important. Uh, that it has an intense meaning to you, that it's something that you uh, find is really important. And I think that also gets people invested in what you say. And I think that really is also part of why INFJs are seen as storytellers. Uh, all of our visual signals are perfect for a storyteller. We might not build immediate excitement about what we say, but if you start listening and if you start uh, hearing an INFJ out, the more you listen, the more interesting it becomes, the more fascinating their story becomes, the more you want to know the end. So that also adds some pressure on you INFJs, you have to make sure you have a good ending to what you do. <laughs> Otherwise I think you're gonna bump people out. Now, as INFJs, uh, I find that INFJs tend to seem very fascinated, preoccupied, intense and caring. That's the four key visual components. Uh, fascinated, intense, preoccupied and caring. And um, beyond this, there are quite a few uh, interesting qualities of the INFJ. First, when gesture, we tend to gesture towards the audience, towards the person we are talking to. Uh, we're trying to move other people, we're interested in moving others, not ourselves. And uh, besides that, we're trying to pull information from ourselves to share with others. We're deep sea divers of information, we feel as feeling introverts, as intuitive introverts. We go deeply into ourselves to try to puzzle out emotional issues and complex theoretical problems, try to figure out the answers. And then we try to share those outwards with other people. So there's two key INFJ gestures, that pulling information out from yourself rather than grabbing information from the world, and the sharing information with others rather than trying to weigh information given to you by other people, critically. Uh, looking at other types, you'll find that, for example, explorer types will have the opposite of these. The op explorer types will be grabbing information and weighing and balancing it. INFJs will have uh, trying to share and communicate the story and trying to uh, pull out from yourself what it is you're thinking about to share it again. Now, so this means that INFJs are, in particular, also going to show a certain way of gesturing, not just gestures in themselves. While INTJs might have more straightforward gestures, like ISTJs might have more straightforward, uh, quick gestures in that sense, uh, the INFJ's gesturing is more relaxed and uh, the fingers and their movements are more fluid in a sense that INFJs that are trying to communicate to other people are trying to do so in a fluid and careful manner. We're trying to make sure that we are giving a good personal message to other people. Looking at how an INFJ talks, I find that INFJs have a lot of stops and breaks in what they say. We keep going inside and stopping mid-sentence and then suddenly we rush through a message quickly. We explain it uh, in a very quick and speedy fashion. It's like when INFJ speak, there is that once upon a time there was a man, pause, and then that man came up and he rose and he sat down on his throne. And what I'm trying to say here is that INFJs as introverts and how they talk are constantly shaking out of what they are saying as they are saying it. And in other ways, INFJs are constantly articulating what they are saying carefully. Every word for the INFJ is carefully enunciated and composed. Every message is carefully composed before it is spoken out. 
The ENFJ speaks out without these breaks and without, but with the same composure. The INFP uh, has these breaks but does not have the composure and is more scattered in how they speak. The message seems more like it's free flow, just associations that come to them as they are thinking, but the INFJ seems like they've thought it out before they say it. So, this also means that INFJs have a little pressure on them. Okay, um, other people are going to know that you thought this true before you say it, so everything you say is going to seem serious, even when, it, even when you are in a mode of processing. And what you say is going to seem like you thought about it for a long time, even if you just come, came to it uh, recently. Uh, so uh, be aware of this and uh, think about this and how you communicate yourself with other people. Also think about the fact that uh, these visual signals are in no way unique to your type. Uh, all of these signals are in part shared with other types. It's just the total sum of these cues that is unique to the INFJ. Also consider that uh, visual typing in itself is not a good way of learning about another person. Visual typing can give you clues into another person's riff or how they tend to come across. But if you're interested in how the INFJ thinks and what they are dealing with and what they are processing, um, you also need to understand what it means. What does it mean to be a feeling judging type? What does it mean to be an intuitive introvert? Just the fact that you can read a person visually is not enough. You have to also understand what it means and you have to be able to say it and share it with other persons so that they can see it themselves too. Uh, otherwise you don't understand typology. So visual typing is by no means uh, going to save typology and is going to make it objective and going to make it uh, uh, some, going to be some revolutionary discipline. It's just going to be a little uh, neat uh, trick you can uh, use to uh, add to and support your personality typing. And in the case that how you read a person visually doesn't fit with their personality, always look at their personality. That is the most important thing. How they come across visually, that's just, that's much less important. The important thing is how do they feel about their personality type and how do they relate to these traits and how does this fit with who they are. That's the important question when you're trying to understand another person. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did leave a like, share and subscribe and may your neurons be with you.